Hi, it's Carmi Weininger of the Reactor Panel Saddle Company, and I'm going to take a couple of minutes to answer this burning question that everyone has, which is, what is a reactor panel saddle? How does it work, and how is it different? So I'll give you a little bit of a tour. We'll start with the saddle top. This is a model we make for trail riding. It's called the VSD Summit. And all of our saddles have the same technology, although they're based on all different kinds of trees, all different sorts of seats, all different sorts of flaps. For whatever discipline you do, we make 15 different models. We begin with the tree, which is inside the saddle. And these plates, these flat parts, show you the angle and contour of the front of our tree. When I flip the saddle up, you'll see that instead of having pouches that are full of air or gel or flocking or whatever different materials there can be to introduce padding underneath the saddle, our saddles have Velcro, and the Velcro has circles. And the circles, all four of them, are designed to accept rubber discs. The rubber discs come in three different profiles a thin half inch, a medium three quarter inch, and a thick one inch. All of them are made of sorbethane, which is a patented and very dense rubber. The discs have a number of functions. They attach the saddle to its panel, which I'll show you more of in just a moment. They also, because they're a dense rubber, act as a shock absorber. And finally, because they're on Velcro, they can be almost infinitely repositioned, which is how we get a custom fit. And I'll show you that in a moment, too. So the panel is kidney-shaped. And if you've looked at any of our videos that show you how to chart the area available to saddle, you'll see that this curved top line follows the wither down to the back of the horse. And this contoured bottom also follows the true angle of the flare of the rib cage. And these panels are quite flexible and quite soft. When assembled, the saddle, and this would be a dressage model, has the panel underneath. You can see the front edge in the front and the back edge around the saddle in the rear. If you look at the front, you'll see the attaching discs here and here. Because the panels are independently attached on the left and the right, they can move totally independently from each other. They can move with the flare of the shoulder, and they can compress and expand. And it's this property that gives the panels the ability to flex and follow the undulating back in motion. If you think of the back of a horse as not like a carousel horse that goes up and down, but rocks back and forth, left and right, with every step, the saddle's uniquely designed to follow the back in motion. In the rear, we again have an attaching disc on each side. And there are a couple of unique properties about our saddle in the rear. If you look at the angle of the panel from spine to rib cage and put it onto a horse with a broader, flatter loin, the panel will automatically take on a flatter shape. Conversely, if the horse has a very steep spine to rib cage, the panel will simply stay in this shape as it's on the horse. And finally, part of our weight distribution system and close contact connection to the horse comes from the fact that if you lift both the flaps, you'll see that there's a long distance where the saddle sits down on the panel in the center of the seat. This means that where your seat bones are, you're on a very thin layer of foam and very closely connected to the horse. With the discs in front of you and behind you, and the panels moving and flexing in front of your body and behind your seat. But with a great deal of close contact and stability in the center, you're not at all up in the air, podiumed on these discs.